Now I'm here to talk about tune-ups. Tune-ups are another thing that marketing companies try to push on you. Spring tune-up, fall tune-up, stuff like that. Well, modern cars are, have a lot of control by computers and are much better designed than the older cars, right down to having timing belts and stuff like that, which when they wear, don't throw your timing out. So tune-ups aren't required as often. They often come with platinum spark plugs, new from the factory too, so you can drive 100 to 160,000 kilometers without changing your spark plugs. Older engines on cars have distributors. Newer ones just have a coil pack, like this. It's just three coils, or however many it needs for the motor and it works by an electronic signal from the computer telling each coil when to fire and that's all triggered by a crank position sensor that measures a point on the crankshaft while it's rotating. Engines with no distributor never need to have their timing set so that's a myth. If you have an engine that has a timing belt like this one and a distributor well then it's very unlikely the timing needs to ever be set because timing belts don't stretch that much and they have a tensioner that usually keeps them fairly tight. So on, if you haven't touched the distributor and you haven't touched the timing belt, it's most likely that you don't have to set the timing on them either. On many modern vehicles and older vehicles, they use a timing chain. Depending on the style of motor, the chain could be very long. Timing chains stretch a lot when the engine gets older, and that changes your timing if your timing position is set from the camshaft, because there could be a long distance between the crankshaft and camshaft so that chain could stretch. If you have a carbureted vehicle and you shut your engine off and it diesels or runs on as they call it, that has nothing to do with timing because when you turn your key off you have no sparks, you have no timing. That always has to do with how fast the engine was idling at when it shut off. The faster it idles, the more likely it is to keep running on and especially if the motor's hot car has less than 160,000 kilometers or 100,000 miles, then it's not likely you'd have to change your spark plug wires or your distributor cap. One way to know when you need to change your wires or cap is your engine tends to misfire during acceleration or idle or rough idle. Another real easy way to tell is on damp mornings or when it's really rainy out or the weather changes quickly and condensation forms on your engine. If your engine doesn't want to start, or misfires a lot once it does get started on days like that, but on nice days it runs perfect, you probably do need spark plug wires and a distributor cap. As wires get older, the rubber or silicone they're made out of breaks down, and when there's condensation on them, it can jump the electricity from wire to wire or to ground, and the cap, the Bakelite or plastic as you want to call it, it can get old and brittle and get little tiny trails arcing spark trails cut into it where the spark can jump to the wrong place or go down the side and jump to ground. Every car with a distributor has a rotor. They come in all shapes and sizes. Well when the plastic on the rotor gets old it deteriorates too and you can sometimes see little spider web shadows underneath or if it's a white colored one or something that's light colored you see little tiny burn holes. It's really common on old General Motors V8 vehicles that big cup shaped rotor that they burn a tiny hole through and one day your car is running perfect and the next day it just shuts off while you're driving or it won't start. Well take this part off, flip it over, look to see if it has gray shadows underneath and possible little pinholes burned in it and change this part. It's only a five or six dollar part and your old GM car might fire right up. On older Hondas, especially Accords, they have a problem with misfiring and not running some days, period. Because a little computer chip in here, called an igniter, just goes bad randomly for no reason. If you buy a brand new one from Honda, they cost about $130, and they're fairly easy to change. Another problem with old Hondas from the early 90s is the electric part of the ignition switch, which is on the other side. Sometimes you have to find just the right position to get your Honda to run by just holding it there. Well, it's pretty simple to change too. Just one screw on the other side and one connector. And you Now if you don't know how old your spark plugs are, you, ha you can take one out and take a look at it or take a couple out. There's platinum kinds and the regular kinds. The way you can tell if they need to be changed, that gap at the end, the round part should have a nice square edge. It shouldn't be rounded. The gap should be what it's 
supposed to be, whether that be 45 thousandths or 60 thousandths of an inch. It's a little harder to tell for these platinum ones because platinum is so expensive that the little firing round tip in the middle is so tiny to save on platinum that it burns itself down inside that insulator and you have to look down in a little tiny pinhole just to see how much it's it's been worn. Of course a perfect platinum plug, the little platinum tip in there is level with that insulator. Another funny thing about platinum plugs, if you're trying to read the color of your plugs and know how well it, whether it's burning rich or lean, um, they seem to burn hotter and this little tip seems to always be white. So it doesn't give you an indication very well of how well your engine's burning. This typical spark plug that's not platinum is the correct tan color that a spark plug should be if it's burning correctly. Always look to see that the insulators aren't cracked that there's not oil crud buildup on there, which usually shows up as a tan colored, you know, crusty buildup. And make sure the gap isn't too big. Of course, you should check your air filter once or twice every year. That can be changed by yourself. Now the one sensor on your car that makes the biggest difference that I think for fuel economy is the one that's on your exhaust system. Sometimes it's under the car, sometimes it's near the catalytic converter, like this car, it's just up there by the exhaust manifold. Well, that's called the oxygen sensor. Oxygen sensors just deteriorate through time. Original factory ones usually last between 50 to 200,000 kilometers. But it's recommended you should just change them every, say, 80 to 100,000 kilometers, just because they do deteriorate and you don't even notice that you're starting to lose fuel economy. Or other than a big drop in the miles per gallon you're getting in your car, that's of course the first sign of a failing oxygen sensor, some vehicles surge when they're idling. They, 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 they idle up and down, up and down, like they're going to stall, then they recover, and so on like that. That's another big sign you need an oxygen sensor. Yeah, they cost between 60 to $200, but man, they sure make your engine run better and save a lot of fuel. On Hondas and some other cars, if you put an aftermarket, cheaper oxygen sensor in, you may have the engine running exactly the same way as it was before. Some vehicles actually like, especially Hondas, to have a Honda oxygen sensor in them to make them come back to life and run normal. On cars like this that have the semi-hemispherical head, or 16-valve engines, where the spark plug wires are in the middle of the rocker cover, <coughs> there's a gasket down there that goes around the rocker cover around the spark plug. Well, they deteriorate over time and oil builds up in the spark plug hole and you pull this thing out and it's just dripping. When the oil gets deep enough, it can actually cause a little misfire <laughs> through the oil. Well, the best way to fix that without having to change your rocker cover is just remove the spark plug, let it sit for a half hour, the oil runs onto the piston, put the spark plug back in, dry this off, and you might be good for another year. Sure, the be-all end-all is just change the seal. On cars like this where they have the long stock, many cars have these now that goes to the spark plug. Could be hard plastic. You get microscopic arcing holes burnt through them too. And the engine is misfiring all the time or only when you accelerate. The redneck repair is just wrap lots of black electrical tape around the affected wire. So, so long as it still fits in the hole and the misfire goes away, if you want to spend some money, well, then change your wires. If you have a car, especially a foreign car, like a Volkswagen or Audi, or even a Toyota sometimes, and it runs perfect every time you start it, you sit there, rev the engine in the driveway, not in gear, and it runs perfect, but every time you step on the gas when you're accelerating, all of a sudden it goes blah, cuts out, and then eventually RPMs pick up and it starts running good again. I'll show you something to look for, most people don't even think about. Those kind of vehicles have an airflow sensor in this box. It's a vein that opens and closes as the engine's breathing air. And the air cleaner's below this usually. Well, they get cracks in this hose. Well, motor mounts move a little bit every time you accelerate and deaccelerate, so the motor swings. Well, that causes flexing in these pipes. When the rubber gets hard, you get cracks. And usually the cracks are hard to see. It can be underneath there, on the back side. So every time you go to accelerate, your motor moves a bit, it sucks air through the crack because the crack opens up, and then this air vein doesn't move. It's getting its air from over here, so then the engine doesn't get enough fuel, so it cuts out for a second. <laughs> so all you do is go around your engine on this rubber hose, move it everywhere, and look for a crack to open up. 
the redneck repair is just duct tape wrapped all around it and that fixes it. Of course to correct repair you just change your rubber hose and that's a five minute job.